In 2011, Tropical Storm Irene devastated roads across central and southern Vermont, and the repair work that followed inadvertently damaged miles of adjacent rivers and streams. As a result, a special program was developed in 2012 to help make our roads more flood resilient, while at the same time preserving and even enhancing the natural processes in our rivers. Watch what's going on. It's scouring there, it's transporting here, it's depositing here. You see there's different channel ways yep. it's going. Watch how this changes. The Rivers and Roads program is a joint venture between the Agency of Natural Resources and VTRANS. And the intent is to inform folks from who work on the transportation infrastructure on how rivers work. We are targeting municipal road crews, VTRANS personnel, and private sector engineers, ranging all the way from uh, equipment maintenance and operators, so guys in the yellow machines that you see in the river, all the way up through top engineers that are designing uh, and overseeing construction of that transportation infrastructure. The two-day program includes workshops that cover everything from river geomorphology and channel design to aquatic organism passage and in-stream habitat. So this culvert runs into the Connecticut River, and these are rainbow trout on a spring spawning run, trying to access this culvert. And when they're ready to spawn, they're one-minded, and they're going to they're going to try that. They'll beat themselves to death um, trying to get through that pipe. Each day is broken up with field trips to connect the classroom to the real world. One of the trips uses electrofishing to illustrate the importance of in-stream woody debris. Here we go. Here we come. We talk about habitat and, you know, kind of in an abstract way, but we get right into the streams and we can say, okay, here's this root complex and some wood debris and a nice scour pool under there and stick that electrode in there and you see a dozen brook trout come out and that makes it real. <laughs> so you can see this, you know, messy stuff that would normally seem like something we have to do something about. Yeah. Um, really isn't, it's not a threat to any infrastructure downstream, creating some great habitat value. So, you know, this mess is good. Uh, Mother Nature's messy and and fish, and fish like it. There we go. That's a nice big one. Essentially what we're learning is that what's good for the rivers and good for aquatic habitat is also good for our road systems. So post Irene and post floods we tend to have a lot of activity in our streams and what we saw was you know intuitively it makes sense to get material out of the stream and you know the idea is to let the water move unimpeded. The reality is that that actually works against you. You know, all of that roughness, all of that mess in the rivers and boulders and logs, we call that habitat. But it also slows down the velocities of the water and also reduces its erosive force, which helps our roads. And that kind of counterintuitive, you know, concepts is something that really we haven't been very good at getting across to the folks that work on our road systems. I think Irene really opened people's minds to the fact that maybe there's a better way to do things, a way that would reduce the amount of damage we see during these flood events. What's the drainage area and what's the valley setting? Because we need to get at our channel dimensions, width and depth, and we need to understand whether these streams should be meandering or straight, whether they should have riffle pool beds or step pool beds or plain beds. How about habitat? What do we want to think about? How about, about? habitat? How about yeah. habitat? Let's see Rich. some. Let's see some habitat built back into these things. So initially you need to have Large flume tables are used to mimic riverbeds along roadways. Program participants are able to implement what they've learned and see how various water flows impact their work. We are building a stone weir to help slow the water before it comes to our pipe. What we're doing now is um, a flood disaster was, scenario was set up in the flumes and what the students are doing is working through how would we use the tools that we've learned over the last couple days to recover from this disaster. This has been an important training because what we found oftentimes after Irene is we weren't speaking the same language. 
with the folks who were trying to do repair work. And so there was oftentimes projects that happened that didn't happen in a way that might have benefited both the resource as well as what the community was trying to achieve. We may not remember all the words, fluvio geomorphology may not stick in their head, but the basic concepts they walk away with and those stick with them. The Rivers and Roads program is offered five to seven times a year at locations across Vermont. Between the classroom work, field trips, and experiences with the flume tables, participants leave with a much better understanding of the connection between our rivers and our roadways. One of the things they did was to build a couple weir structures to keep the bed from further down cutting and getting under the wall. Well, I think there have been two pieces that have been really fundamental in furthering our understanding. And one is coming out into the field and seeing the rivers and seeing what looks pretty good and then also seeing situations where things have really not weathered the storm very well. And then taking that sort of experience and then going back into the classroom in the lab with the flume table and the model set up and being able to build our own simulated river and put in the woody debris and put in the bigger stones and really get a sense of how do those features affect the river. I've been working on roads and bridges for 30 years and still learning. Some of this we can use without any added cost. It's just a matter of understanding what we should do versus the whole straight line engineering approach. The cost can be huge and nobody wants to increase the cost. We want to get it built right the first time. So this training is really, really important. Oh, we're starting to lose our road. Yep. Where? Okay. Yeah. One of the goals of the program is to improve the efficiencies in restoring roads after flood events. Not only making roads more flood resilient, but also designing the repairs in a way that improves river stability and restores the natural resource value of the waterway. They want to know this stuff. You know, our interaction in the past has been through the regulatory process. You know, do this, don't do that, but not really why you know, why this is bad or why this is good. And, and this gives them that knowledge, which they really, you know, they really are looking for to, and better understanding because they, you know, again, they want to do the right thing. And it's amazing what you see when you bring the regulators and the regulated together in an environment that's not nearly as stressful as the job site when you have equipment running and dollars going out the smokestack and the primary impetus is to hurry up and get the job done. When you come into this setting, neutral ground, nobody's wasting money, people open up and you see a lot of back and forth discussion and by the end of the two days you see a lot of handshaking and a lot of exchanging of numbers and I, so I think we're really building that collaborative sentiment among the participants and the regulators that also participate. The idea here is to, you know, interact with our transportation folks, let them know what we know about how rivers work, and, you know, incorporate that into their projects and understanding. And that way we're, you know, we're working together uh, on this. It's not our rivers and their roads, it's, you know, we're, we're kind of working together on this. I'm very hopeful that we are really made huge headway with this and you know that things are going to be much better for the environment.